Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to lesson 198, Only My Condemnation Injures Me. I just might bring that down a little. The white edition again. Only my condemnation injures me. Injury is impossible and yet illusion makes illusion. If you can condemn, you can be injured for you have believed that you can injure and the right you have established for yourself can be now used against you till you lay it down as valueless, unwanted and unreal. Then does illusion cease to have effects and all it seemed to have will be undone. Then are you free for freedom is your gift and you can now receive the gift you gave. Condemn and you are made a prisoner. Forgive and you are freed. Such is the law that rules perception. It is not a law that knowledge understands, for freedom is part of a knowledge. To condemn is thus impossible in truth. What seems to be its influence and its effects have not occurred at all. Yet must we deal with them a while as if they had. Illusion makes illusion, except one. Forgiveness is illusion that is answer to the rest. Okay. So forgiveness is illusion that is answer to the rest. Forgiveness isn't needed in eternity where everything's whole and perfect. It's only needed here in the temporal realm, in the, in the dreaming realm, where the mind seems to be constantly beleaguered by um, the temptations of um, thinking that it's this physical thing, this physical body. And even now sitting here making this video, it's extremely convincing. And the temptation to want to believe that I'm a body making a video is uh, overpoweringly strong in my mind, even though I know, right, this is where knowledge and perception are different, even though I know because of an experience that I've had in my mind that it's not true. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I can hear all the new people out there saying... Uh, well, why are you even making a video? Why do I eat breakfast? Why do I do anything? Right? In the hope that it's helpful. <laughs> right? Why did Jesus walk across the hills of the Holy Land teaching to tens of thousands of people and you know, take twelve disciples if he knew that he was one already? So because there's a there's an atonement to fulfill, there's this whole thing that goes on, which uh through your own individual reckoning and, and acceptance of brings you to the conclusionary experience of your temporal journey uh, through the illumination of your mind, okay, which is the end of it. But uh, that's nece by necessity, there's two parts. There's the purification of the mind, the part where you have to return your mind to God as it was given to you, and uh, the experience, which is the illumination. Both of those things are necessary and required. They're both... Uh, you know, but when the, the experience, that's not up to you. But the mind training is, the at accepting atonement for yourself is. But um, when that experience is, uh, is going to happen, has already been set. It's already set in the mind. You know, so the catalysts for bringing that about and beginning and, and enhancing, enhancing that awakening sequence, that awakening procedure are... Um, speed it up considerably in the in the pursuit of transformation through the use of these lessons because these lessons are not from this world right they're specifically for that purpose divinely channeled for you to use to bring about the collapse of the time that it would have ordinarily have taken uh, for that experience to uh, show you that your transcendent reality or your eternal reality that's better I don't like transcendent so much but uh, anyway let's get on to it um, forgiveness is illusion that is answered to the rest. Forgiveness sweeps all other dreams away. And though it is itself a dream, it breeds no others. All illusions, save this one, must multiply a thousandfold. But this is where illusions end. Forgiveness is the end of dreams because it is a dream of waking. It is not itself the truth. Yet, does it point to where the truth must be and gives direction with the certainty of God himself? It is a dream in which the Son of God awakens to his self and to his Father, knowing they are one. Forgiveness is the only road that leads out of disaster. Disaster. <laughs> 
past all suffering and finally away from death. How could there be another way when this one is the plan of God himself? And why should you oppose it, quarrel with it, seek to find a thousand ways in which it must be wrong or a thousand other possibilities? <clears throat> is it not wiser to be glad you hold the answer to your problems in your hand? Is it not more intelligent to thank the one who gives salvation and accept his gift with gratitude? Thank you, Jesus. And is it not a kindness to yourself to hear his voice and learn the simple lessons he would teach instead of trying to dismiss his words and substitute your own in place of his? His words will work. His words will save. His words contain all hope, all blessing, and all joy that can ever be found upon this earth. His words are born in God and come to you with heaven's love upon them. Those who hear his words have heard the song of heaven, for these are the words which all merge as one at last. And as this one will fade away, the word of God will come to take its place, for it will be remembered then and loved. This world has many seeming separate haunts where mercy has no meaning and attack appears as justified. Yet all are one, a place where death is offered to God's Son and to his Father. You may think they have accepted, but if you look again upon the place where you beheld their blood, you will perceive a miracle instead. <clears throat> How foolish to believe that they could die. How foolish to believe you can attack. How mad to think that you could be condemned and that the Holy Son of God can die. The stillness of yourself remains unmoved, untouched by thoughts like these and unaware of any condemnation which could need forgiveness. Dreams of any kind are strange and alien to the truth. Yet what but truth could have a thought which builds a bridge to truth which brings illusions to the other side? Today we practice letting freedom come to make its home with you. The truth bestows these words upon your mind that you may find the key to light and let the darkness end. Only my condemnation injures me. Only my own forgiveness sets me free. Do not forget today that there can be no form of suffering that fails to hide an unforgiving thought, nor can there be a form of pain Forgiveness cannot heal. Accept the one illusion which proclaims there is no condemnation in God's Son and heaven is remembered instantly. The world forgotten and all its weird beliefs forgotten with it as the face of Christ appears unveiled at last in this one dream. This is the gift the Holy Spirit holds for you from God your Father. Let today be celebrated both on earth and in your holy home as well. Be kind to both as you forgive the trespasses you thought them guilty of and see your innocence shining upon you from the face of Christ. Now is there silence all around the world. Now is there stillness where before there was a frantic rush of thoughts that made no sense. Now is there tranquil light across the face of earth made quiet in a dreamless sleep, and now the word of God alone remains upon it, only that can be perceived, upon it, only that can be perceived an instant longer. Then are symbols done, and everything you ever thought you made completely vanished from the mind which God forever knows to be his only son. <clears throat> there is no, <clears throat> pardon me, there is no condemnation in him, he is perfect in his holiness. He needs no thoughts of mercy. <clears throat> <clears throat> who could give him gifts when everything is his? And who could dream of offering forgiveness to the son of sinlessness itself? So like to him whose son he is, that to behold the son is to perceive no more and only know the father. In this vision of the sun, so brief that not an instant stands between this single sight and timelessness itself, you see the vision of yourself and then you disappear forever into God. Today we come still nearer to the end of everything that yet would stand between this vision and our sight, 
and we are glad that we have come this far and recognize that he who brought us here will not forsake us now, for he would give to us the gift that God has given us through him today. Now it is time for your deliverance. The time has come. The time has come today. And tomorrow, lesson 199, I'm not a body, I'm free. I love that lesson. And 200. No peace except the peace of God. Two great lessons. All right, that's it. Love you. <laughs>